Well, as you may know, I paint watercolors mostly. I work in all mediums, but I uh, focus mostly anymore on watercolor. And I paint watercolors of uh, uh, many scenes, uh, often landscapes, cityscapes. That's what I tend to focus on. Uh, but I, I do a little of everything. However, I've had a lot of requests about my snow scenes. People ask, how do you do that? Uh, I've had uh, a number of classes I've taught, workshops, and that always seems to be uh, very popular. So I thought I would focus this channel mainly on the snow scenes. This particular snow scene, these are all small copies, is an award-winning painting that was in a number of uh, international shows, won some awards. Uh, it sold uh, to a collector out near Pittsburgh. A uh, number of other snow scenes I have um, throughout that we'll go over. So I want to focus mostly on that and we'll talk about the different types of day we can paint under, whether it's a morning, afternoon, evening, uh, sunrise, sunset, um, cloudy days, foggy days. So we're going to cover a lot of it throughout uh, the various videos and instructions. And um, you know, I don't mean to sound so bold, I've, I've told some people. Uh, there's a lot of opinions out there on how to paint watercolor. And, and I see what I think looks like very typical watercolors. And you, you, can, you can experiment in many different ways. Um, but when people learn some of these techniques, their watercolors do better. They, they tend to jump off the paper more. People have a, a lot more success. Uh, you can stumble and fumble around trying to figure it out, uh, but when someone shows you some of the tricks, it really, uh, really can help. Um, it saves a lot of time. So I've worked through a lot of these ideas. I'm still experimenting. This is a print of a, a large watercolor I did. This is a large print, but the, the original was much larger. I do try to work large whenever I can. Most of my paintings are full sheet watercolor. I do some smaller. So. We'll focus mostly on that, and I'll, I'll start with this one. Uh, I'll bounce around to a number of other paintings I did. I try to keep the whites of the paper. I don't think that that's imperative, but it's something that I try to do. It's it's my initial goal. So when I'm painting a, the watercolor, I paint around or block out or mask, whatever I need to do to preserve the white of the paper. And try not to use white pigment, white paint, uh, whatever some people use. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that and maybe occasionally you might have to do that. But it's my goal in the beginning and like this painting, all the white you see is not paint. It's the paper. It's the preserved paper. I leave the white of the paper, then I tint it. And in doing that, sometimes it takes until the very end of the painting to see if it's really going to succeed because you have this large mass of white that has to be tinted and shaped because it's just a big block of white. So um, it's just one of the things I do. It, it makes it a little more interesting, but uh, like I said, it, it's not necessary. If you find that you need to add some white paint somewhere to make the paint better, the painting better, well, that's great. Uh, but there are people who, who think they're purists and uh, really want to keep it a transparent painting and, and they would prefer not to use white pigment. Because white pigment, if you're going to put on watercolor, is not transparent. It's uh, opaque. And uh, to some watercolor shows and, and watercolorists, uh, they try to keep the whole transparency thing alive. So this is a little of each. I'm going to do a little of all of it. We'll do some pigment. We'll do some preserving. And we'll work different ways. 